Right, Imam. How much we know about the Imam? When we don't know, they don't have any importance. <coughs> but inshallah, from tonight and on, we will appreciate their being more, and we will do something in return, which inshallah will be talk of our tomorrow. What we need to do in return for all of these favors that Imam Mahdi has upon us. We only can talk about one or two. There are millions of favors that Imam has upon us, which we don't know about. <coughs> and since we don't know about it, we don't care about it. First favor. Our existence and the existence of the universe is dependent on Imam Mahdi. If it wasn't because of Imam Mahdi, none of us would have exist. The universe wouldn't exist. It's because of him that we exist. One of the things that we have to really be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always we have to say, thank you Allah, alhamdulillah, is our existence. That Allah created us. If we were not created, what is the benefit? Allah created us and gave us the opportunity and he tests us either in heaven or health. So if you want to be created, there wouldn't be any benefit. <coughs> Our existence is dependent on the Imam. <coughs> Group of people during the time of the minor occultation, Ribat al they got into debate that has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given this authority to Imams to create and give us sustenance or not? It's a debate, an argument. Has Imam has this authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create and to give sustenance? Or is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only? They had a dispute. They said, let's send a letter to Abu Jahfar Muhammad ibn Uthman, which he was the representative of Imam Mahdi Allah ta'ala for Let's send him a letter. And he will ask Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala for a in return and we will, our problem will be solved. He wrote the letter to Imam Mahdi Allah Ta'ala for a and the letter came back. Stating that letter. Allah Ta'ala for a Sharif. Let's have salawat by his We are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rest of mankind are our creation. How can that be? Is it possible? Sheikh, you say a lot of things that doesn't make sense. This is the word of Imam Mahdi. We come to Quran right now. Nahnu sana'i rabbina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. Imam Mahdi, I'm not saying for myself. وَالْخَلْقُ بَعْدَنَا صَنَائِعُنَا Can a human being create or no? Let's go to Quran. And this is the beauty of our faith which we have to be proud of. It. <laughs> Imam of Ahl al-Bayt told us, anytime you hear hadith from us, take it to Quran. If it contradicts Quran, throw it to the wall. If it doesn't, then the hadith is right. So it's a hadith. <coughs> There's a question for us. Can we create something? Can human being create something? Or is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create something? We go to Quran chapter 3 verse 49. Surah al Imran. Prophet Isa is saying, أَنِّي أَخْلُقُ لَكُمْ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَحَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَأَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَيَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ I, Prophet Isa is saying, I create for you out of the clay, like the form of a bird. Then I breathe and I blow into it and it becomes a bird. Here's the most important one. By the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here's the difference. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the authority. He creates the authority. The difference between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the creator and we are the creation. Ahlul Bayt have given this authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Prophet Isa can create 
Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam, their level is much higher than all of the Prophets. <laughs> Except Rasulullah. Ahl al-Bayt's position are above all the 124,000 Prophets except the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa It's an argument again. How can Shaykh say that Ahl al-Bayt, their position is higher than the Prophet? Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Nuh, Prophet Isa, Prophet Musa. How can Ahl al-Bayt be higher than them? Let's go back to Quran. Again, this is the beauty of our faith that we have to know. It's all based on logic and makes sense and hadith and Quran. Prophet Ibrahim tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, show me how we bring them back to life. Allah tells him, aren't you sure? This is Quran read. What he replies, I'm sure, walakin liyakma'inna qalbi. I want to get more assurance. Because I want to see. When we see something, you are more assured than we hear it. <coughs> Prophet Ibrahim says, I want to see the Akma'inna Kalbi. Allah says, bring a bird, four birds, cut them into pieces, smash them, put them on the different top of the mountains, call them, they will come. Let's go to Ali ibn Abi Talib. What Ali ibn Abi Talib says, he says, Thou kushif al if the, if the curtains are removed and I can't see everything, to yaqina. My yaqeen and my belief won't increase because I have reached the utmost level of truth. Now, if I can see, nothing will increase in me because I see everything. He is the belief, he is yaqeen. And if you were to throw out the life of Ahl bayt you see it. Going back to Imam Mahdi, نحن صناع ربنا والخلق صناعنا. So it is possible. Prophet Isa did it. That is one way of looking at it. Then Imam continues, and I'm going to read the hadith word by word in English. Imam also continued, and he said, more clarification. The Almighty Allah created the bodies Himself. He creates the body Himself and distributes the sustenance because of neither he is the body nor he incarnates into a body. There is nothing like him. He is all hearing and all seeing. As for the Imams, listen to this. As for the Imams, they request the Almighty Allah and He creates. And He gave sustenance to fulfill their request due to the respect that Allah has for them. So if you and I were created, Imam Zaman asked Allah, create him, create him, create me, and he creates. Imam Zaman said, give them sustenance, he gives us sustenance. You see how much important it is? If he doesn't, it's not there, we don't exist. We don't get a drop of rain. Sun won't come out. There won't be any moon. The universe will vanish, as I said two nights ago. If it wasn't because of the Imam, the whole universe would have vanished. Not the world, the whole universe. I don't know if you have seen very, very old days. They used to have two rock on top of one another, and they used to grind wheat and rice. In the middle, there is a stick, which keeps these two together. If that, that stick is not there, as soon as you go one turn, the top part will fall. There are two on the top of one another. Ahl al-Bayt, they say, we are that stick to this universe. In order for this universe to go around, this stick should be there. If it's not there, the whole universe is done. It's only one or two favors of Imam upon us. You see how much, how much we are away from the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt and we don't know their position? If a person wants to know the status of the Imams, where the Imams are, what are their positions, what they do, read the Al-Jamal al -Kabir. It has been ordered by Imam Zaman to a person three times, Jama'a, 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 read the Al-Jamal al And also Imam told the same person, Ashura, 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 read the Ashura also, he emphasized on it. So action plan of tonight. 
throughout this month of Muharram and Safar, let's at least read the Ziyarat Jama'a Kabir one or twice with a translation. I have about 45 to 60 nights of lectures about the interpretation of Ziyarat Jama'a Kabir. When you hear it, I went to a community, I told them, okay, what topic, what topic do you guys like to hear? They were beginners. They said, okay, I give a couple of options, and I love the Jama'a Kabir because it gives you where Imams are. I think we said. And they, I started the first week, second week, I saw them that they have questions. It was so high for them, they couldn't observe. I told them, okay, I have to change the topic. And it it's really deep in values and in meanings. Narrated by whom? By Imam Hadi Ali salam. A person comes to Imam Hadi Ali salam. Our tenth Imam asks Imam, if I go, if I come to do ziyarah of you next to the shrine, what should I read that will tell me who you are? Imam told him, told him, when you get near the shrine, say Allahu Akbar 30 times. When you get a little bit closer to the shrine, say 30 times more Allahu Akbar. And say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Let's have salawat. Allah, Allah, Allah. Again, when you got closer to the shrine and you're about to touch the shrine before reading the ziyarah, say, Allah, Akbar again. One way of understanding this, why Imam emphasized so much to say, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. Because when you read this dua, Na'udhu Billah, Na'udhu Billah, some ideas come that Ahl Bayt, they are God. Because of what Allah has given them the authority. So Imam wants to say, okay, you are not God. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, Nazzaluna an al bring us down from being God, say whatever you want about us, we are. So you are not God. Bring us down, we are not Allah. Nazzaluna an al so, Imam wants to prepare us. When you go there, I know when you read this, you're going to start doubting. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. We are the servant of Allah. Rasulullah used to be proud to be called Abdullah. He would call himself, I'm Abdullah. He was Abdullah. Ahli <coughs> Bayh, they are Abdullah. They are the true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when you get into it, Read Ziyarat Jama al Kabira. Starts. Assalamu alaikum ya ahl baytun nabuwa. Salam upon you, O the household of the Prophet. Wa bawdi al basalah. Wa mukhtalaf al malaik. Allah. They have given us everything. No question is left for us. But we just have to go and get it. We are hungry. They say there is an open buffet from here until the end of the auditorium. Come and eat. We're just sitting in our room. We're dying hungry. It's too much food. وَمُخْتَلِفُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Meaning what? Meaning malaika go and come back to you. And in and out, in and out, in and out. What do malaika do? What is the job of the malaika? When the baby is inside the womb of the mom, there are angels who come and they draw the face of the baby. This is one of the tasks of the task of the Malak. Every day in the morning when we are when we wake up, Allah sends two angels right and left. To right. Right, right, good deeds. Left, right, bad deeds. At night time those two go up, new two comes. Is that going to be the same? From night until the morning the right, right the good deeds, the left, right the bad deeds. Next day, Allah sends two new malaik. And that is Allah's mercy. Because He doesn't want the same malaik who saw me committing sin to see me tomorrow commit sin again. He doesn't want that. So every day, two malaik in the morning. How many malaik in the day? Created 7 billion times 2, 14 billion. Every day. So you can count the malaik. Imam continues. Malaik, every drop of rain that comes, we think that the drop of rain comes and they're everywhere. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has calculated everything. Imam says, every drop of rain that comes, a malaik will deliver that drop to the earth and it will go back. Every drop. 
Malaika do what? Malaika bring the soul. Malaika do what? One of our beloved Malaika, Azrael, that we love him so much, he takes the soul. Malaika basically run the show. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do this, do this, do this, do this. Imam Ali salam states, if an angel wants to move for a glance of an eye, how much can it move? Without our permission, it will be destroyed. It will vanish. They want to create something? Permission of the Imam. Everything that happens to the universe, it goes back to the Imam. Everything that happens to the universe, it goes back to the Imams. مختلف الملائكة من يوات ملائكة they are going to the Ahl Bayt in and out in and out in and out on the hourly basis. So you see where the Imam is? This is only a little bit. Only I'm going to talk about the Sirat Jamal. A couple of more points. When you read and read the translation, our Adayas they are full of knowledge. وبيكم يمسك السماء أن تقع على الأرض by you Allah holds the heaven from falling down. By his permission. Because of you, Allah relieve your and my difficulties and hardships. You see where the position of Imam is? These are only one or two favors of Imam upon us that we can understand. A drop in an ocean. When you read Ziyara Jama'i Kabila, and the more you read, and the more you read, and the more you research, you see that if we put all of our life, we don't do anything, and we don't sleep, day and night, every second of life, we put for them, we still haven't done anything. You're about to be drowned. You're drowned. Help, help, help! Somebody comes and takes your hand. Can you thank that person? How are you going to thank them? Thank you so much. That's it. That's it. This is basically the Western ideology. A person does something big for you, thank you. That's it. Your life depends on that person. If he wasn't there, you were gone. You were drowned. He comes and he gave you his hand and he saved you. Even until the last day of your life, you do everything for him, you still haven't paid him back. Because what you do right now for him, you still depend on him because he saved you. If you wouldn't save you, you wouldn't be able to do anything for him. Imam Zaman not only saving us, our existence is based on him. So the action. What we need to do from tomorrow, tonight. Let's set a time as of families, as of communities, as of friends, as of relatives, come together, sit, read Ziyarat Jamal Kabir. See what who are our Imam. Why we have to appreciate them. If we know the Imam, and if we do what we have to do, which I'll talk about it tomorrow night, Ashura won't happen again, number one, and the Imam will reappear. But until I don't know the value of the Imam, and until I don't do anything for the Imam, the Imam is not going to be appear. Because I'm not ready. Those people who came at the night of Ashura didn't know the status of the Imam. That Imam is more important than your life and my life. Let our life and the life of our family and generation try to be sacrificed for them. What is our value in front of the Imam? One of the companions of the Imam, Zuhair ibn Qayyim, he said, Imam, I'm so sorry that I have only one life to support you. He said, I wish I had a thousand lives. I would support you and I will prevent you from being killed. I, they will kill me and I'll come back alive and I will fight to help you, to support you, to defend you, and they will kill me again, and I will come back alive a thousand times so you won't be killed. Why? Because he has reached the level of knowing who is his Imam. 
He knows his Imam, where is he? And he has to put every minute for the Imam to stay and to last longer and to live longer. How much thing I have done for my Imam? How many times a day I have bring sadness to the lack, to the heart of my Imam with my action? Imam is not coming because of those Christians and Jews and idol worshippers and kuffar. No, Imam is not coming because you and I. Because majority of people...